Hi, I'm Elliot from the EPL Makerspace, and today we're going to do a complete beginner's guide to GarageBand. We won't go into anything too fancy today. This video is for total beginners who want to start experimenting with recording and production, or maybe people who have opened the program once or twice but then got a little bit intimidated. And hey, that is totally okay. There is a lot of stuff going on here. Or, you know, there isn't yet, but there will be. Now, if you want to slay stages and sweep the world with your production prowess, well, GarageBand won't do that for you automatically, but it's a great place to start, even if you don't have any formal music training. Plus, all of the skills you learn in GarageBand will transfer over to Logic Pro, which is used in professional studios the world over. Today, we're going to go over recording basics, editing basics, the sounds interface, and then to finish up, we'll export our file so we can play it or share it anywhere. Let's jump on in. So the first thing that's going to come up when you open GarageBand is this. Choose a project type. There are some good templates here to get you going uh, with a good selection of keyboards or like basic voice effects uh, or tools to start producing beats over here, but we're going to start with an empty project. Once we do that, we'll have the choose a track type interface for our first track with four different options that I'll go through now. So the first one is, is the software instrument. We'll use this option if we want to connect a MIDI device, and MIDI just stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, or we can even use our regular computer keyboard for inputs. The second one is a microphone or line input. Uh, use this if you have a microphone connected or anything else that can be connected to the computer by a USB or quarter inch patch cable through an external audio interface. Uh, in the makerspace, I've put our electronic drum kit through this setting. For example, it's not just limited to microphones. You can also use this track type if you want to bring in external audio files, like maybe pre-made beats that you might have access to. Number three, guitar or bass. This setting, which you'd call Recording Direct, will provide you with a number of virtual amps to which you can play your guitar or bass once you've connected it to your computer, usually through an external audio interface. Recording in a physical space with an amp and a microphone will still get you a more natural tone, but this option allows you to simulate a lot of what you might get out of that and give you a broader palette of sounds to work with. And then number four, the automatic drummer. Uh, this is one of my favorite options, a super customizable automatic percussionist with a huge range of styles that adapts to the ebb and flow of what you actually record. If you select this option, GarageBand will start by providing you a few bars of basic percussion that you can use as a jumping off point, or add on top of a riff you've already recorded. But for today, we're going to pick a software instrument. Now, if you haven't plugged in a, a MIDI keyboard, this musical typing interface should show up, but just in case it doesn't, we can find it in Window, Show Musical Typing. There it is. Once you pick a track type, you'll be confronted with a lot of information at once. Let's keep our heads and just break it down one piece at a time. We'll start with recording, and we can start a recording by just hitting this red circle up here. All right. So you would have noticed that uh, while I was doing that, I used my space bar to stop recording. Um, you can also just click this little stop button right here. So I'll hit play, and then once I hit stop, this button, the stop button, is going to change into this button that'll get us right back to the beginning. It's very helpful. Now, while I was doing that, you might have noticed this clicking sound. Uh, that's because the metronome is on by default. This might seem annoying at first, but once you get used to it, it's a really helpful tool for keeping all of your tracks lined up and in tempo. If you want to start casually for now, feel free to click the metronome off. Then, once your take is done, uh, you can play it and review it like this, or you can just hit the record button to record over what you did before and uh, kind of erase it and get a new track in there. And we'll go ahead and hit this plus button in kind of the middle left of the screen. This will bring up our choose a track type interface again. So let's grab a software instrument again. Now we'll be able to switch between the two tracks. You can tell which one you have selected by what appears in the top left of the screen up here, uh, or which track is a lighter gray. So now I have the first one selected, now I have the second one selected. This is going to be important for basic editing. Changes you make here will only apply to the track you have selected. So now that we've recorded something, we can slide it around to make it play at different places in time. We can also split those recorded portions. We can do different things with each half. We can do that by going edit, split regions at playhead. As you can see, this is the playhead. It tells us where we are in the song. And now we have two different tracks that we can slide around and kind of make them play at different times.
There we go. We've got to keep the suspense. Got to make them wait for it. And now we can also join these together if we really feel that they're better off together. We can select them both by shift clicking this one. And then I can I could go up here and just hit join regions, but I'll use the shortcut and hit command J. And now they're both together. This is really good for splitting up takes and merging them together to get the perfect one if you split at pauses in the music. You can get small increments of time to match everything up perfectly in tempo with this tiny slider up here. It's subtle, but it's really, it can be really, really important for getting your editing just right. Now, before we move on, I want to take note of the tempo function up here. This is really easy to change, and it can affect the tempo of what you've already recorded and the speed of some of, of GarageBand's more automatic instruments. So we're going to want to keep it in mind when we're recording. So I'll just double click on it and I can change it to whatever I want. So if I want to make it slower, I'll choose a lower number like 80. We'll see how that affects our track. Oh, it's like a snail. And then if we want to jazz it up a little bit. All right. Let's get it back to a more even 120. Now, there is a way to change tempo partway through a song, but we'll leave that for a more advanced video. There's a lot you can do with editing, like switching tempo partway through a song or adjusting the volume on individual tracks, but this is enough to get you started so we can move on to the juicy heart of GarageBand. It's different sounds. The sounds interface is here on the left. For line inputs and instruments, think of the options here like camera filters. There are effects that will be applied to simulate environments or kinds of amps. This is how you can make something sound more natural or drastically change its timbre. And timbre is just the quality of a sound, the way it sounds. And you don't even really need to decide which one of these you want up front. Click on any one of these sounds while having a track selected and you'll apply that effect to that track. But for software instruments like we have here, the sounds interface will essentially change the instrument you're playing. Different sounds will come out of your keyboard when you tap a key. Anything from a piano to an orchestra sting uh, to a drum kit. If you're new to making music, I'd highly suggest you play around with something from the arpeggiator category. Let's see, I'll grab one of my favorites, the dripping cycles. Now, here, if you hold down a couple of buttons, you're basically halfway to a song. Check it out. So the keys I hold down kind of form the different bounds of the scale that it's going through. So I'll hold down a high one and a low one and you can kind of change the emphasis of where it goes. That's a great little feature that gives you a great basis for a song. Now, once you have your song all recorded and edited how you like it, you're probably going to want to turn it into a single audio file that you can put on your phone or share in an email. This isn't hard to do from GarageBand, but you have to dig for those options in the share zone up here. There are a couple of options here, and they mostly amount to the same thing. For most purposes, you're going to want to select the export song to disk setting. And then here, we'll choose our file type. If you want a small file size for easy sharing, we'll pick our MP3 here. Or if we want maximum audio quality, we'll choose a WAV file. I think that's what I want today. Now, I'll make sure to pick a place to save it where I know I'll be able to find it. And then that's it. Once I hit export, the file's going to end up in that folder. And we've got a file we can share anywhere or burn onto a disk. Now, there are plenty of things we could still touch on, like adding some of GarageBand's built-in loops, which are up here in this interface, or getting the most out of our automatic drummer, or adjusting the timbre and EQ of our tracks in fine detail. That's this interface down here. There are some really great tutorials out there for all of these things if you're still curious. Like on lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com, you can watch a more advanced video tutorial for free with just your library card. But that's it for me today. Thanks for stopping by, and be sure to check out epl.ca for other great online resources.